Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. In this video, I am going to explain one of the important and more useful function, input file name. This is part of Spark PySpark inbuilt function. What is the use of this function? This function is basically used to identify the input file name for each record that got created in the data frame. Let's say you are creating a data frame by reading, reading a folder. Within the folder, we are having hundreds or thousands of files. And later, while exploring the data frame, you come to know there is a problem with one particular record. Now you have to trace it back through which file this particular corrupt record got produced so that you can take some action. So for that, you know, manually we cannot go through several folders and several files. You know, we cannot manually open and check. Instead of that, we can use input file name. So while creating the data frame, along with the actual data, it will capture the input file name also. This function is mainly used for debugging and troubleshooting purpose. I will give a demo so that you can understand that easily. To get started with this demo, I have created Azure Data Lake Storage in Azure portal. And also I have created a container training and I have created input file name within that. I have basically created four folders. Each folder is divided by quarters and it is having monthly data within each quarter. So this is my sample data. Let's say, you know, there are around 36 files located under 16 different folders. So let's say I'm creating one data frame by reading the entire data, the entire files under input file name. So in one of the input file, you know, there is some problem. Later, you know, through sanity check in your program, you come to know. But you know, how we can identify that particular file for that record. So manually, you know, we cannot go through all these files and we cannot check. So instead of that, we can use input file name function to determine the file name through which that particular record got created. So for this example, here, you know, this is my, um, uh, this is my, you know, um, data. Here you can see. You now there are 36 files under 16 different folders. So intentionally, I have created one corrupt record for this exercise. It's located under this file. So here, there is a column called product key. Now this is as per this project, you know, this is one of the mandatory column. It should not accept any null value. But intentionally, you know, for this particular record, I have created null value. So if you look at you know, the previous record, it is containing 361. Similarly, the next record, this is having 474, 491, 592. But this particular record, you know, it's empty. So actually, this is, uh, this is one of the corrupt record we have to capture. So I hope you understood with the file structure. You know, I have created uh, I should blob storage and also I have uploaded the files under different folders. Okay. Now coming to Databricks. In my Databricks notebook, um, uh, Databricks environment, I have created a notebook and cluster is up and running. So the first step, I am creating a mount point to read the data from Azure Data Lake Storage in Databricks. I have already posted one video, you know, what is this mount point, how to create now, what are these parameters? Now, I have given detailed information. In case uh, you don't know, you, wa you want to understand more, then probably you can refer that video. So, in this video, I'm not uh, going to take a deep dive on that. So, here I'm creating a mount point. So, basically, this is the integration point for Databricks, uh, Databricks to Azure Data Lake Storage. So, let me execute this one. Okay, mount point got created successfully. Now, I can read the data from Azure Blob Storage all the files located under input file name. So for that, first I'm creating a variable with root path. Let me execute this one. Then I want to see all the folders under input file name. Let me execute the FS command. So this will list down only the files located under input file name. It's not recursive. So basically it will give only four folders for all the yes. Okay, there are folders. Now, I want to read all the files under this folder. So, for that I'm using wildcard. This is, uh, you know, pretty straightforward uh, Spark read operation. So, I'm creating a data frame DF and displaying. 
basically it will read all the th all the 36 files then it will create a data frame finally it will display let me execute this one okay the execution got completed and we are able to see the data frame so this is containing all the columns from the csv files so see here we are having the entire data so far so good now let's say now this is one of the simple exercise i am showing but in your practical uh, project now you might be reading uh, many folders and also hundreds or thousands of files under different folders so you will get a lot of data so let's say in your project you are having some sanity check after reading the data after reading the files from folder so for example let's say you know i should not have any null value for product key this is one of the important column for my uh, business requirement so i cannot accept null value for a product key so we are doing some sanity check let me execute this step so a simple uh, uh, you know filter i am performing you know where product key is null and finally i am displaying that data frame okay you can see you know there is only one record because intentionally i created null value for one of the record so that is the record you know here we can see now let's see in your practical scenario you know you are getting some corrupted corrupt record so now your requirement is you, know, you have to understood you know you have to understand you know through, from which file this record is getting uh, created then based on that you have to locate and you have to write a mail uh, to your uh, source team you know uh, you have to ask for reason or you have to get updated file so that is your requirement so in order to identify the file you now there are 36 files in this simple exercise so we cannot open 36 files and manually we cannot check then how we can do so for that input file name the function input file names comes handy the syntax is very simple you know it's a input file name okay that is the simple syntax uh, and i am creating a new column here we can give any column name using with column i am creating a new column name and using uh, pyspark in inbuilt function input file name i am capturing the input file name also along with record so let me execute this step see here now we have created data frame with one extra column that is input file name so for each record now along with record it will give the input file name as well see here there is a column input file name added with all the you know uh, corresponding file name for each record now now, now it is going to be easy for example you are passing um, this uh, data to some downstream application but later you know you can um, rectify you know if you find you know there is a problem for example now you know we can execute for example i want to capture the record where uh, product key is null so at the end i am adding this one This is going to return one record where we saw product key is null. See here, now this is returning, but uh, this time you know we don't need to manually check you know which through which file this particular record is getting created. Instead, you know we can easily identify the file name using this function. It has already created the file name. So this is coming under you know input file name. The next folder is uh, 2019 okay 2019 within that q3 within that sales underscore 2019 08.csv this is the file so easily we can identify then we can write a we can drop a mail to source team with this file name i hope you understood the importance of this function this is mainly used for troubleshooting and debugging also it's wise decision to add date ingested column along with input file name so simply we are using current timestamp function for date ingested why uh, why this is needed for example immediately you are not capturing this uh, corrupt record and you are passing the data to downstream applications but later you know one week later or one month later you come to know there is a problem with one of the record so you have to understand what is the file name so if you are going to push uh, uh, date ingested also along with the input file name it will help you to speed up the process on which particular day that uh, file arrived and uh, you know on which particular day you processed you ingested that particular record so let me execute this step see here 
we are getting the corrupt record and in the corrupt record along with input file name we are also getting the date ingested it is giving the current time so you are pushing this data to some data warehouse or database later after a month you are uh, exploring you know you found there is a problem then easily you can trace it back using date ingested and input file name i hope you understood the importance of uh, these functions hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video please like and comment also please subscribe this channel and don't forget to click on the bell button thank you